Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this whole video we're going to talk about star wide receiver William Riley Gall. You may have heard of him. Now let's see some of his highlights. Well, that's just from high school, and he didn't get to the NFL, just college. Division tree. He's still good though. Unfortunately, that didn't translate to his personality. So in this old one, we're going to Knoxville, home of the Johnny, Tennessee. This one is uh, less like Friday Night Lights and more like Monday Night Dark. This is the story of Riley Gall and his girlfriend, well, ex-girlfriend, Emma Walker. She tried to break up with him. He wasn't having it, and his friends weren't having it either when they recorded him. I got your back, man. Let's have a go. We're going back to school in this one, guys and gals, specifically Central High School in Knoxville, home of the Bobcats. Let's go Bobcats, am I right? Emma Walker was a sassy, playful bobcat cheerleader. She volunteered at an animal shelter, was an honor roll student with the dream of becoming a neonatal nurse. And so, being pretty and popular, she started dating L. Riley Gall. Riley was two years older than Emma, wide receiver for the Bobcats football team, church going, Star Wars loving, regular dude. Sports, smarts, games. He was well liked in school by Emma's parents, at the start at least. See, it seems like he was a player both off the field and on the field. When he started dating Emma, he was actually still with his L girlfriend. It's a flag. Now Emma knew about this, but she was just so head over heels that she was determined to make him hers. And she eventually did. Riley and Emma dated on and off for two years. Drama school bullshit, it was apparently quite toxic. At times he would send her snapchats like this. But then the next week he'd be, oh, everything would be hunky-dory. However, Emma's parents would eventually ban him from the house, as it just wasn't healthy. This went on until Riley graduated high school, and he went to Maryville College about 30 minutes away. However, when 16-year-old Emma saw Snapchats of 18-year-old Riley with other chicks, well, that would be the nail in the coffin of their relationship. It coming to an end at Halloween 2016. Though Halloween 2016 is when the horrors would only begin. Being dramatic now. Two weeks after, one of Riley's teammates on the Maryville College football team had to take him to hospital after he overdosed on pills and booze. He returned to campus two days later and started counseling. Which brings us to the 20th of November 2016. A couple of days before Thanksgiving. That day, twas a Sunday, Emma went and got ice cream with her L fella, and, you know, she was getting ready for school the next day. Apparently, you know, her family would say the house was a much happier place now that she had broken up with Riley. The toxicity had evaporated. However, that night, in the middle of it, Emma's dad was woken up by noises. He said it sounded like someone was in the house and had slammed a door, not once, but twice. He got up, had a goo around. What's going on? He opened the door to Emma's room, peeked in to make sure everything was cool. She looked fine, asleep in bed. She wasn't. He then left, went to check on his son. He was fine, asleep in bed too, and he went back to bed thinking, ah, none, it's not. The next morning, Monday morning, the house arose. Emma didn't. Her parents went up to her room and found her there. They called 911. I just tried to wake up my daughter for school, and she had a ripple. <laughs> you said that she's non-responsive? Yeah. First responders arrived, and word quickly spread that Emma was dead. 
Riley, her ex, posted about it on Twitter. Rumors began to, you know, spread that she had overdosed. Maybe she had, maybe she had killed herself due to maybe what happened to Riley. Well, friends and classmates remember Emma Walker at tonight's Central High School playoff game. A section full of purple stood out at tonight's Knoxville Central and Marshall County game in Lewisburg. Emma's funeral will take place tomorrow afternoon. Her cheer coach and the rest of Central's cheer squad will serve as honorary pallbearers. However, what really happened is more mysterious. See, the first responders saw a small bit of blood on her pillow. Like maybe she had vomited blood as if she had, you know, ingested something. However, when the detectives had a look, they saw a small hole in the wall next to her bed. And then examining her body further, Although there wasn't much blood, there was a small entry wound on her head. The slamming door her dad heard the night before wasn't a slamming door. She had been shot in the head as she slept, shot through the wall from the outside of the house. In fact, there were two bullet holes in two separate walls in her bedroom and shell casings in the garden. And so the investigation began to see who was behind this. No shit. This is weird, right? Shooting somebody through a wall. Like, how is that even possible, right? I mean, I know it's possible, right, to shoot somebody through a wall, but it's usually, like, accidentally. You know what I mean? On purpose? Meh. But as I'm sure your gears are grinding. Arr, accident me bollocks. The police wanted to go back and see what happened before what happened. The Friday before the incident, she was at a friend's house celebrating another good old win by the mighty Bobcats. While there, friends told police, she received a text from an unknown number. Very strange, as the message was about Riley, saying he'd been kidnapped. She kept getting messages from this unknown number, and then got a call, in which she could hear Riley in the background, like he was screaming for help. So Emma and her friends rushed out of the house, only to see Riley lying in a ditch right outside her mate's gaff. <laughs> Got it. As you can imagine, Emma was not chuffed about this uh, prank. Though Riley was like, yeah, I was kidnapped. Absolutely, absolutely I was kidnapped. The next morning, Saturday morning, this is the Saturday before her dad heard the slamming doors on the very early Monday morning. As she was pulling into her driveway, she saw a man dressed all in black with the hood up, standing outside her house. She was able to get home, and this scary looking fella then started trying to get into the house, trying the knobs and so forth. Emma started freaking out, as you would, and as she was home alone, she reached out to the one person she thought could help her. Big brave Riley Gull. He's a football player, come on, he'll knock this shit out of him. Even though she was, you know, still uh, pissed at him for the, quote, prank, unquote, the night before. She texted him. I hate you, but I need you right now. Riley rocked up, looked around, and couldn't find this mysterious person. So the police, investigating what happened to Emma, learning of all of this, then looked through neighborhood CCTV and saw this footage of a guy dressed in black that Saturday morning. However, they couldn't make out who it was. And so the police decided to speak with Riley. Now, when he did speak to them, he decided to continue that the kidnapping story was real for some reason. Why? It was traumatizing. I didn't know what to make of it. Went up to my stepdad's house, and I pulled in the driveway, and this van pulled over across in the semicircle, and these two guys were, like, walking across the street. I know one of them grabs my back, and the other one's around the corner. And they just like put their hands over my face and just took me to their van or whatever. Why would somebody do that to you? I, I genuinely have no idea. They did ask me, they were like, um, you know, like, who would you want to talk to for the last time? And so I started freaking out and I said, Emma. And they made me call Emma and I was just 
crying and screaming. She thought it was a joke. She thought it was playing a prank on her. So, okay, so what about this mysterious man in black? He thought it could be the same people who kidnapped him. Okay. That's when she FaceTime called me. She was crying and freaking out. So I said, okay, give me a minute. I'll come down there and check it out. The only thing that I thought of was whoever the person was at her uh, house Saturday morning. That's the first thing I thought of. He also told the police he had spoken with her Sunday night, hours before she was shot. He, at the time, was on the campus in Maryville, bawling his eyes out. However, his roommate said he didn't see Riley until almost 5 a.m. that morning. I just told her um, how much I loved her and uh, that I was sorry that she didn't want what we had anymore. She didn't care about the relationship anymore. She said she cared about me. She loved me, but she didn't care to be with me anymore. I sat in the parking lot just looking at uh, pictures of us. Next thing Riley knew, he woke up Monday morning and people were trying to get a hold of him to let him know what had happened to Emma. So I was like, what are you talking about? Did you not hear what happened? I said, no, what are you talking about? Now, Riley Gall was the heartbroken ex who could never get back with the woman of his dreams. And that was definitely true when the police spoke with Emma's friends, who told them Riley was jealous, obsessive over Emma, always had to be with her, non-stop texting. He had to have her. Now, he sounds like a bit of a wreck the head, and sirens basically just start going off in the investigators' noggins over their toxic relationship. And it seems that, you know, to Riley's friends, after he got the boot from Emma, well, and a neighbour of Emma's, who was around that Saturday morning and had seen the man in black, told the police, Oh, Jesus, the man in black, yeah, I've seen him. I thought it was Riley. I said, how are you, Riley? She was like, yeah, by just his body, his build, the way he walked. Thought it was him. Waved at him. He waved back. So was he just trying to drive Emma insane so she would get back with him? This is just the Dennis system. Now, the first step to any erotic conquest is to D, demonstrate your value. Engage physically. Nurturing dependence. You're going to want to nurture that dependence that she's feeling on you now, guys. Neglect emotionally. Stop taking her phone calls. Cancel all your plans. Maybe that fictional angry neighbor that you've simulated comes back, and this time, you're not around to cool him off. She'll start questioning her self-worth, start questioning her, her self-esteem. Inspire hope. I S. Separate entirely. Another really weird thing is that when Riley spoke to police in that interview, he referred to the love of his life Emma Walker, as the girl. He couldn't even say her name. The girl. She, uh, she texted me. Wh which girl? The one that passed away. Okay. What, what's her name? Emma. I hope to God I'm not a suspect in her death. Did I say you were? I hope you don't think it. Because I wouldn't hurt that girl for... The, I, I would hurt myself if I would hurt her, and that's what I've done. Did you shoot into Emma's house? No, sir. Another flag into play, offense being fucking weird. So Riley was obviously suspect number one, but you know, they, they needed more evidence. And you know what would be really helpful, right? Be real helpful if they had the weapon that was used to shoot into the Walker home. Then, you know, the police just happened to learn that Riley Gall's granddad happened to report the day before Emma was killed, that his gun had been stolen. It was the same caliber as the bullets shot into her home. And didn't Riley live with his granddad? Around this time, since the death of the woman he loved, Riley was leaning on two close friends for support, Noah and Alex. At one point he asked them, you know, um, hey lads, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't by any chance happen to know how to get rid of fingerprints from a gun. You know, asking for a friend. For a friend. It's weird, I know. He then said he didn't hurt Emma, had nothing to do with her shooting, but he did have his grandpappy's gun and he needed their help to get rid of it. You know, because he'd be in the shit for it. They initially turned him down and then called the cops. See, he told them he was going to throw the gun in the river, the Tennessee River. So, Noah and Alex speaking with the cops, well, an undercover operation was hatched. 
They were to go to the Tennessee River, and when he pulled out the gun, signal the police, texting them a secret word, who would then march over and take the gun from him. The police even set the boys up with a recording device to capture the whole event. So, Riley came over to Noah and Alex's, unaware he was being recorded. Play back in the dog. I can't, I really, I want to be so upset and I can't because I'm not worried about getting arrested and putting away for murder that I didn't commit. Never in my life would I kill someone that I love that much. Love you, bro. It sucks you gotta deal with all this, man. Some of you guys, like, with my life, because I mean, this is 70 years in jail if I get convicted of something I didn't do. Okay, you just give me a gun. Just, it just needs to be gone. For whatever reason, just it just needs to be gone. You guys don't have to come with me if you don't want to. I mean, I got your back, man. It's in the Tennessee River. They will never find it. They don't owe anything because if they did, I would be in jail right now. Every, everybody that is friends with her that doesn't like me because of my dark past or whatever, they said she killed herself, like she shot herself because of me, or that I shot her, or that... There's a whole other like, category of blame where they, some people that understood the situation said she killed herself because of me and her parents, or she just killed herself because of her parents, but she didn't kill herself. She did. Nobody knows that but me and you two and my grandparents. They haven't released that thing by people just make up shit because they want me to be in the way. So the three of them left, went to Riley's stepdad's place where he had hidden the gun, and began driving to the river. When they arrived, Riley pulled out the gun, Alex and Noah signaled the cops, and Riley was taken away. He was charged with the murder of Emma Walker. Inside Riley's car at the time of the arrest, they also found, well, black clothing. This morning, 18-year-old Riley Gall sits in a Tennessee jail, charged with killing 16-year-old Emma Jane Walker just weeks after their breakup. According to police, in the early morning hours Monday, a shot fired by Gall into Walker's bedroom from outside her Tennessee home killed her in her sleep. Police arresting Gall Tuesday night on charges of first-degree murder, holding him on $750,000 bond after having him under surveillance, saying he was preparing to destroy evidence related to the homicide. But Gall's mother telling our affiliate WATE that her son is innocent. The pair, seemingly a picture-perfect couple, the cheerleader and the football player, classmates until Gall moved on to play football at a local college this fall. I wish, like, I knew more what was going on, so maybe I could have helped her, and I'm so sorry. And in the wake of Walker's death, Gall posting this lengthy missive on Twitter the day after her death, just hours before his arrest. To think that every memory we have, every happy special moment we shared, can't ever be relived. I love you, Emma Jane Walker. If convicted, Gall could face life in prison. A year and a half after Emma's death, the trial would begin with Riley pleading not guilty to first degree murder. See, phone records placed Riley near Emma's home that night. He was saying he was in college at the time. They had the gun, same one used, and the defense couldn't really argue with the facts. He was there and he shot into the house. So the defense decided to go with something else. His mindset at the time. Now, there is no doubt that you will hear some of the most bizarre, reckless conduct of my client. You will hear it. That's what you will hear throughout the context of this trial. But I submit to you all at the conclusion of this case, standing outside, in a mostly charged relationship after you've been successful in having contact with your girlfriend, everyone characterized that with Emma for the last two years, committed the offense of reckless invasion with the hope of coming to her rescue, of being her hero. We'll ask you to find Mr. Gall guilty of reckless homicide. And I, I suspect that makes very little sense. See, that would be two to four years instead of life. No point arguing in case he can't win, so just go with the lesser evil. So yeah, he was there. He shot into her house. But he was just doing it to scare her. He didn't, it wasn't like a premeditated murder. He just wanted to scare her 
like he had when he was kidnapped or when he was dressed as the man in black, so that she would come running back into his arms. To be fair to the defense, I mean, maybe he didn't actually mean to kill her. Like, just the idea of shooting from outside a house, like, if that was your plan, if it was premeditated, like, it's like, it's one of those things where if you tried to do it, you couldn't do it, you know what I mean? So maybe it just was a plan to scare her. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's psychotic, and he should go to jail for being so stupid that he taught up that plan. However, when you look at this scene, and where her bed was, where she would have been, where he knew she would have been, and the house and the wall, and where the bullets came from, it was only like five feet away. He fired two shots, both at the same point, like from separate angles, but they arrived at the same point. If he was trying to scare her, he probably wouldn't have shot at her bed. To the prosecution, it seemed obvious he was shooting to kill. Riley Gall was found by the jury after four hours has the jury reached the verdict? Yes, sir, we have. Charging the defendant with first degree murder. Did the jury reach a verdict? Yes, we did. What is your verdict? Guilty. <laughs> Riley was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for 51 years. My intentions were not and never have been to cause him any physical harm. At times, I was a terrible boyfriend. I caused her emotional and psychological pain during the two years that we were together. But I never once even imagined it caused her any physical harm. My intentions that night were never to harm Emma, let alone take her life. I wanted to scare her, to frighten her so bad that she would have no choice but to talk to me again, to confide in me. I would be there to comfort her and to win her back. I loved Emma, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about her or what I did. I know that I can't be forgiven, and this will never be forgotten. But now that the truth is out, I pray that it's enough to show that I never meant to take Emma's life. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is a story of, you know, obsession, jealousy, stalking, you know, turned deadly, unsurprisingly. I mean, the lesson here is, you know, if you want to get back with your ex, you know, probably, yes, yeah, scaring them, bullshitting them, shooting them. It, it's probably not the way to go. Who would have thunk it? Riley Gall wanted to be Emma's hero, you know, probably, probably exactly like he was on the football field. And instead, he turned out to be... Well, not going to be too dramatic. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you as always real soon in the next video. Take care. Mike out.